Hey guys, what's going on? Welcome back to another student case study interview. Welcome, Shelly. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> um, super excited to have Shelly on. Uh, she's got some amazing results, very surface level highlighting. We're going to go all in the, the meats and the guts of it, but first role she landed was out of 150 applicants, which is really, truly impressive. She was crushing it, triaging and doing setting, and she's transitioned to closing now to do 10,000 her first month. So we're going to be unpacking all of that, which is some serious results. And I don't even know what was the timeline of that, like to actually hit those different, those milestones. So I, I think I was doing triaging for around three months. Um, and then the opportunity came for me to start transitioning into closing um and yeah so that would have been in like January February time and then obviously February was the month that I was like all in still had some triage calls going on in the background so it was quite hectic but it's when I kind of went all in um, in closing so last month oh but yeah it's it's super super cool because that transformation is very quick by the way and <laughs> we're talking that before we start recording as well it's like it's really interesting I talk about that with with all the students who are crushing it is like you set these big goals, but then you hit them and then you go, well, well what's next? Because you didn't expect to hit 10,000 a month that fast, did you? No, absolutely not. Like I was just saying that I thought that would be the end of this year. So end of 24 goal was mm -hmm. to hit that figure and to be a full-time closer. So the fact that I've done that within like the first two months of the year, it's crazy. And it's like, it, you do have to quickly put things into perspective of, I need to like create new goals and and actually like, am I being too easy on myself? And if I've got potential, should I go for it? But it's like that fine line of not pushing yourself too much. Yeah, totally. I want to take the guys back way before you met me because you have a really cool background of of running your own business. And I remember when you, when you told me your story on our, on our sales call, I was like, that's awesome. And I think that's really, really cool. So Tell us about the business that you ran before you even got into high ticket sales and, and how you transitioned out of that into this. Yeah, so I started um, a sustainable um, equestrian, it's so a horse riding clothing brand. Um, and I worked on that, like, well, the idea came, I like, started when I was about 16, so many years ago. Mm. And um, I started working away at it um like designed all the clothes myself like literally did everything myself started the business myself found factories um fabrics like all the ins and outs um of the industry did myself um and I started building that um for it to be like that was going to be my life set up like I was so motivated had like a whole raise funding for it went like looked down the investing route to so kind of covered all areas which I loved and I learned so much from it um, but then we had some issues with manufacturing, sourcing, and things just started to take a turn, basically. Um, as I went to launch the business, things started taking a turn. Um, clothes were made in different countries when they shouldn't have been. And I think with obviously my naivety of being so young and like not ever like if anyone works in the clothing industry, like you'll know how um, you know, it's not it's not a great place to work and everyone's very secretive and people, you know, will try and scam you and things like that. So it's quite a hard industry to navigate. Um, and yeah, things started taking a turn for the worst for me and my sustainable brand that I'd set up all the, every, the marketing for and everything like that was not very sustainable at all uh, behind the scenes, which I didn't know about. So as things started taking a turn for the worst, I was to be quite honest, like, tens of thousands at this point had gone and it was like I came to this crossroads of do I find a whole new manufacturer and start this process again or do I call it call it a day my family are really supportive but not like wealthy you know I raised this funding and and, and did this independently mostly um and they were always pushing me to like continue and go carry on down that path because they knew how like I've been laser focused on this now for like two years it was like my whole life um I done so much work on it but I th really took a step back and looked like I had six months left because I have my own apartment like I have my own life and my own car and things like that so I had like six months left of savings to like live off and then we were done 
And I had to make a decision of like, do I continue down this path and keep on pushing it? Because I felt like a failure because I like spoke about it so much and like everyone knew about it. And well, like I thought, obviously, you can be quite self-consumed like in your little world. But it was definitely like an ego hit for me because this was like everything I've worked on. But I had to make a decision and I knew like my family wanted me to carry on because they knew how much it meant to me, but I knew it wasn't smart. So I slowly started to take a step back, obviously made a big loss, but it's like, to me, you make a loss, but I don't really view money in a way that like money always comes back. Like I've always viewed it that way. So to Mm -hmm. me, it was a loss, but it was like, I'll figure it out. Like I've always figured everything out. So that's how I viewed this. And it was hard. Like there was, I think by the end of it, there was no tears left. Like I'd been done, like I was over it. And I think I'd definitely grown out of it as well. Because I think when you put so much work into something for so long and see no rewards, you're just literally running off, like you you backing yourself and, and that's it. That I was like so done with it. So I kind of, and still to this day, there are things behind the scenes that I've still got to close down. So it's not, it's not all completely finished that like legal routes and things like that, that I've have to like, have meetings with but most the most part it's all finished um so yeah that's kind of the background with the business so it taught me so much like I don't regret Mm. anything um and like I'm not like yeah I've lost a bit of money right but uh, equally like not to obviously not sound arrogant by making it back so it's like for me it was like I made a loss but I think I've learned so much from it so that I guess that in a nutshell is like the backstory of me starting that and then like transitioning out of it. Yeah, totally. No, I appreciate you sharing that because there's probably a lot of people that are listening to this who, because we live in this kind of like online world bubble, right? Where to start a business, all that you need is just a couple online things. Whereas like in your world, in the traditional world, you've got costs, you've got team, you've got staff costs, you've got legal costs it's a totally different world in comparison because if you look at someone, for example, like uh, someone like wants to start a gym, they're going to get all this money for a loan, hoping that it's going to work. And if it doesn't work out, they're in some serious trouble. And so it, it it's definitely a very bold move and it takes a lot of courage to, to start that thing on your own. I mean, I'm curious before we dive into high ticket sales and stuff like that, like what, what inspired you to create that business in the first place at such a young age? It's really hard to describe. I just knew that I was going to, it sounds so stupid, but I just knew I was going to be like successful. Like mm-hmm. I just knew I had it in me. Like I'll do, when I have put my mind to something, I'll do whatever it takes. So for me, it was just navigating what is that thing. And I did so much research because I've, I've ridden horses all my life. So I've always been in the equestrian industry. So I've been around it. I was the consumer. Like I knew what was needed and there was just there's, and there still is this day if it's not me it'll be someone else there's such a gap in the market for the product that I was bringing out um obviously with fast fashion and everything like that industry there needs you know it needs to be stripped back to the basics and I could see that and I because I'd done so much research and I'd I'd had you know I had I worked within the equestrian industry so I worked for an Olympic um, horse rider so I was around like luxury from like I moved out of home when I was 16 and I was working with horses Um, so I was just around like a lifestyle and I could see what they needed and I had contacts to make it happen so I think I don't know it was just people can call it stupidity like I just I don't know where it came from but I just had this like I just knew like I could achieve it and I think what really helps is like my family are so supportive like if I come to them with an idea they'll back me 100% and that's not necessarily financial like of course they helped a little bit but from my perspective it was emotional like they were always there they would drive me at like four or five in the morning to a place I need to be hop on planes to visit factories things like that they were always there for me so I think that really helps when you like when you want to start something if you have someone behind you who's pushing you to do it as well um but yeah I couldn't tell you where it's come from but I've always known that I just can't work for someone else like I have to like be in control of my life basically I love that and I think that's great because I think the exact same way and you've gone from tying off the business going from such a traditional bricks and mortar business 
to high ticket sales. How did it even happen? How did you end up finding me on YouTube? Like how did that whole process even occur? Yeah, so I um, obviously, um, as I was going through the kind of that phase at the end where I was like, what on earth am I going to do? Because my whole life now has completely changed. Mm. I knew I needed to do, I knew I needed to find something. I had no idea what, but I also like, quietly like confidently knew that I would find something like I just knew I would I just had to like bide my time with it like I wasn't like frantically panicking like how to make money online quickly or anything like that I just knew something would come up as like I go through life um so anyway I was scrolling on Instagram on reels and this um like girl popped up and she was talking about making like 200k a year doing um high ticket sales so I explored her because obviously I thought that was really interesting, obviously being a female in the industry. Mm. But she talked about how to do it. Like she talked about what she was making, sorry, but she didn't talk about how. And I th- I find a lot of people go around in circles because they don't, they can't really describe how they've done it because they probably don't know themselves. It'd be like if I brought out a course right now to be like, learn how to make money. And mm-hmm. it probably could do that, right? But yeah like what would I be teaching like I've known this industry for a couple months I would add no value to anyone um so anyway I found her and I I discovered the idea and I was hooked and it was only about two weeks from finding that Instagram to finding obviously jumping on a call with you um Mm. and like I thought this is absolutely something I can do like I've worked in sales in the past obviously like clothing sales so in like trade shows things like that I used to just for extra money when I was younger and I was just so good at it like I remember I sold like three like sold out all the coats it was like 300 coats for this brand they were like 400 pounds each and they all sold out and that was due to me so like thing like little things like that I feel like I I already proved to myself this is something that I can absolutely do um and then I just was like hooked and I you know went on YouTube and and was so committed to like learning more about the industry found another business which was a mentorship or coaching program that was very large I had a lot of subscribers but just not authentic at all and Mm. for me like if I'm gonna I had no problem making an investment like I had no problem you know buying your mentorship right if I knew it could (laughs) <laughs> yeah if I knew it could if I felt right about it like I think investing in yourself is so important but you've got to feel you've got to feel like I don't know you've got to feel at peace with it in a way so when I came across you and I know everyone says this but you're just very like authentic there's no like you know rubbish or there's no trying to like make these crazy videos and sell like the dream like it is quite straight to the point like you speak honestly like yeah you can make 10 20k a month right because that is the truth but you're not trying to like I don't know sell a dream to people it's very like authentic so that's how I came across you and literally as soon as I came across your videos I watched most of them in like an hour or something and then I messaged you and and yeah and that and that was that yeah no I love that yeah because I remember you wrote on the call and you're you're pretty straight shooter you're like yeah, no, this is this is exactly what I want to do. I'm ready to go. Yeah, no, I knew I was going to close as soon, like on the call. Like there was no question. I don't really like get fear, get the better of me because I would never yeah. jump on a call if I wasn't going to close or like I would never waste anyone's time because I've already done my research ahead of time. Mm, yeah, no, it makes a lot of sense. Not to some people though, which I'm sure yeah. you've, you've found selling. You're, uh, you're understanding that some people need to do more research and haven't done enough Crazy. apparently um that's uh that's the sales game for you but no it's really cool and so when we started working together what you were feelings you, you kind of came in the training program you came in the community like what was your initial impression coming through and like what were the first couple of things you did in like the first month or so that helped you land your first role so i think so obviously had the call with you enrolled and then it was like I don't know you get that like um how I can't describe it when you're like okay now like what now like yeah I've got all the information but now it's all on me right now mm-hmm. like it's easy to pay like it's easy to to join a program yeah. but it's like okay now it's like I've actually gonna you know make this happen and and um I just started like consuming it like it, it was just like 
I attended the calls, you know, like your live calls. I went through the content, which was also so nerve wracking, like attending like a live call. I've never done anything like that. Um, but I just knew like, I remember saying to my mum, I can't do the same things I've always done in the past. Like I have to change this up if I want to see these kind of results. So mm. I just like gave it my all um and started going through making notes and going through like all the um, education step by step um and then obviously I secured my role I think within four weeks of being in the program which Mm. you know wasn't that like it wasn't I think that was just through chance the way I found that but Mm -hmm. um but yeah I think in the first few days of me enrolling into your mentorship I just kind of just gave it my all and and just knew that I had to like say quite laser focus on this because the results would only come if I put in the work. You couldn't like hide behind anyone else. Mm. No, I love that. And that has what has made you successful because you're exactly right. There's a difference between handing someone a bunch of money and taking complete responsibility. Yeah. Because a lot of people hope that it's a magic pill that you just, you put, you give the money to the person and automatically you're going to get there. And I see that as a common trait between yourself and and other people who are really successful, including the realization I had four years ago when I paid my first mentor 7.5K. I was like, I'm going to make this work. Like I'm responsible to make this Mm -hmm. work, right? There's, There's nobody else that is responsible for my results but me. And I think that's really interesting to observe that, especially I see that amongst the most common successful traits amongst the most successful uh, clients in the community. But that's really cool. And so what was it like going into interviews with, you know, collectively 150 applicants for the same role competing? What was that process like? How did you handle it? What what did you go through? So um, for me, the way I experienced it is um, I reached out, saw the application applied, but then also sent them a message um, saying that I'm very interested within like an hour two hours um, they were like jump on a call and like let's have a chat so I did that and that's when panic mode set in so um, I I basically like went through all your interview because I hadn't gone through that stage yet because it wasn't like I felt like I prioritized other things so I went yeah. through your interview step by step um the process to kind of um kind of prepare but that day also um which is kind of going off tangent a bit and I said this um to business owner the other day my car actually like completely went um the day before and there was like a 5k bill or like five six k bill right and I was like what on earth am I meant to do with this situation so I was like, well, I need to, I need to make the money. Like I, I need to do that. So I think that was driving me. So in the morning I took my car in and I had this invoice. I had to pay like thousands. And then, uh, so that kind of was like, well, I've got no choice. Like I have to make this happen um, to be able to pay that. Learn everything about the interview, did obviously all my research because it all happened so quickly. So I heard about the business and I had actually followed them because I was really interested in their story anyway, personally. But um, I did all my research, jumped on a call and I guess it was just naivety. Like, I didn't know what to expect. I'd never done that before. And I just sold myself. Like, I think when the when a business owner is investing in you and you've got no experience, they're investing in you personally from that point, not like years of closing experience. So I basically just said, like, I'll do whatever it takes to, to like, obviously my, my role was for triage and I wanted to be a closer. So I asked them about career progression and I just said, like, I'll, like I'll put in the work. Like, I'm not shy of that, and I'll do whatever it takes to get the results. And I think it obviously helped me. And and yeah, and then I got the job then and there. And and then two days later, or day later, I enrolled and started taking calls. Wow! And what was that like? So nerve wracking. Like I haven't even watched back my first calls. Like I can't. The sales manager on the team has watched a couple back just for like um to compare. And she was like, you were like a robot back then. But it is, it's like so scary because yeah, I just I've never done anything like that. And then when I remember when my first call closed, so obviously I was a triage, so I didn't close it, but that was like crazy. Like I couldn't believe in my first week I started making money. And I think my family as well were like, what on earth? Because you don't know it to be true. Like I hadn't, I didn't know anyone else doing anything like this. So yeah, it was amazing. 
what was it like when you, you, you received your first magic internet money? It was, yeah, I just couldn't believe I did it. But I also think going back to what we said at the beginning, I think before we started this call, like I don't give myself, like I don't go, well done, let's go and spend it. You deserve it. No, like my lifestyle hasn't changed at all. Um, mm. You know, like I will order like meal prep because so I can do more calls and not cook. Like that's mm. like I'll spend money on, on that, but nothing's changed for me. Like everything's been like invested or in the savings to like build this to actually for the long, for like the greater good. So it was amazing, but nothing's like, it's not like I went on like a big shopping spree or anything like that. Very, very humble. Yeah. And and that's what I find. Like I, I was a little bit different. I, I was, I was very different actually. I think I was 19. I've spoken about this publicly before on the channel, maybe one of the interviews, but I was 19, I believe. And I was like, it was only 300 Australian dollars. So 150 pounds, like it's <laughs> absolutely nothing. And I was just so excited and so giddy. I ran down to the bakery um, near my local spot and I bought what I called the million dollar bagel because <laughs> I because I got my first uh, commission online because I'd been working so hard up at that point. And I was like so beyond excited because it's such a hard thing to wrap your head around. It's like yeah. you're you're taking these little silly little phone calls with people and you you get paid hundreds of dollars per per close or per set to close it's such an interesting thing. And like you mentioned your, your, uh, your family reacted, um, interesting as well. Like, how's that been transitioning to, again, just like maybe not your, your first sales online, but taking sales calls and just bringing all this cash. That's just like, you're just having conversations with people like what, like what, if anything, has that shattered any beliefs? I know you believe that you could have done it in, in the first place and you had a lot of conviction, but, did anything change for you? Was it weird? Was it strange? I think the process in general is quite strange and it still is. Like I'm obviously I've only been in the industry a few months, so it's going to not feel, it still feels crazy to me. Um, I can't, I think, yes, it has, because to be honest, like I didn't think that I would ever be making money like this so soon. Like I think I've always just been in that like work, work, work and 10 years I'll see the rewards and it will just be like an overnight thing in 10 years that will happen or five years that will happen. So, yeah, for me to be doing that now and I think like I see people around me and obviously not like everyone's doing their own careers. And but like I look at people earning like what I've earned when I've done jobs in the past, like normal amounts of money or and they're working so many hours in their career and their incomes capped. Like I really do see the difference now um of kind of this this work this lifestyle to kind of that nine to five lifestyle so I think because now I'm living in it it's definitely become more apparent to me um but I always knew like I it can sound like if if it if you don't interpret it right it can sound arrogant yeah. but I just knew that this was going to be me I just yeah. because I'm willing to work for it like I never thought that it was this would come easy um but I just knew that this would happen I just didn't know when <laughs> Yeah. I mean, there's a difference between arrogance and confidence. Yeah. And most people who aren't successful or who don't have that same mentality will perceive that as arrogance. Yeah. But I don't see it as arrogance because I think the same as you and, and just as everyone in the community, it's, it's all about a confidence or a level of conviction that you know that you'll figure out eventually. Yeah. You don't know how, you don't know where, you don't know when, but you know that you have that self-belief in yourself. And I think that's something you develop when you're a lot younger. Um, I don't know how, but yeah. through some way, shape or form, I'm very similar in that way. I just had that. I knew that the goalpost existed out there somewhere. I didn't know the journey or the path to walk there or how difficult or how steep the hill is going to be or how long it's going to be. But I knew that if I planted that seed in my mind, that milestone of like 10K a month, I knew that I would hit it eventually. But yeah, it's so cool to see that transformation with yourself to do that in such a short period of time like what, what took me like two two in a bit years doing it like in a couple of months is is really amazing to see and i think what was the step like going from triaging and for those of you that don't know that are new to high ticket sales triaging is just a filtration method uh, we have inbound book calls and you and you triage you qualify and filter for the closer what has that been like going from triaging to 
to full-time closing basically um I loved it because for me like my triage school should have been 10 minutes and they were like always 15 like I really struggled to like even though I I definitely felt like I perfected triage when I finished that role um and like I I knew exactly what to say and how and the, like the questions to ask to get the desired results for the closer so I felt like I was very confident in that role but there was just a lot to talk about that I couldn't talk about. And I felt like if I could ask a few more questions, I could, I could get better results from that. So for me going into like the long calls, um, I love that. And I much prefer that. Um, and actually me, I triage, I've triaged and then closed some of my leads. Like if I go back through and call up people, if we, we like, if I need extra leads that always works, like building that rapport. So I love to see that of how of how, that step-by-step -step process of how that can like building that relationship and actually gaining that trust. I think it's so important. Um, but yeah, back to triage, I think it's so valuable. And I think if everyone could do that, like I would so recommend it because of God, if I started closing, I think I would have just been appalling. Like I would mm. not have known like what to say or how to act or, you know, you know, how to make someone feel comfortable because you're on the other side thinking, if I close this, I've made so so much amount of money and it's got, it's not about you, it's about them. And it's it's how to like create that atmosphere to make someone else feel comfortable. Um, and I think triage, I think I transitioned at the perfect time. I think I got to a point where I, even though it was a short amount of time, I outgrew triage and I was just like doing it like in my sleep, to be honest, like next one, next one. And it, and it wasn't, it wasn't, it was nice. And I would have carried on because I love the, I love being in sales, but for me, I needed a challenge. Like I could always want a challenge. So the, prog the progression of how I moved into it worked really well for closing. Hmm. No, I, I love that. And I think it's such a good insight because so many people when they come into this industry have their eyes set on the prize of high ticket closing, first mm -hmm. of all. Yeah. It's the flashy thing. It's the cool thing. It's, you know, it's what everybody wants to do because it's the, it's the shiny object that everybody sold in this industry. Whereas like preparing your skills beforehand, before you transition to that role and understanding that the sales process from the very beginning yeah. and how to do it yourself is so critical and important. Cause like you mentioned, what if your triage is bad or what if they're yeah. sick? right? How are you going to get your calls, right? It's, it's such a powerful skill to learn because when you, when you understand both, you can be a well-developed sales professional, which is, is what you want to be. You don't want to be a high tier closer. You want to be a sales professional that isn't just involved or fixated on just learning the sales process. It needs to be everything as a whole. Yeah. With any business that you go in, you can be successful. Because regardless of it's this business or any business, like you need to have the ability to sell anything, not just the one thing, right? Which yeah. is something that we'll be we'll be definitely talking about. But what uh, what's it been like working with a very successful company in the space? I think you mentioned like let's give the guys an insight to what you're selling. So like what is it, what what is the offer that you're actually selling at the moment? Yeah, so I um am selling um so. Um, service accommodation so for example it would be renting a property um, from like a landlord and then um, our clients would pop that on airbnb booking.com and charge a nightly rate um, so that's that's the offer that I'm selling so basically if you work within our mentorship you will have your first property and you will be successfully running that business. Um, it's amazing, like the support. And I know I I know I sell the offer, but it's, I genuinely believe it. Like I really, I, like I said, I followed um, the girl, like the women who owned the mentorship before because I was so interested. Um, mm. It's a really great um, mentorship to, you know, get into that space. I love it. And what's it been like having close proximity to a founder? Like so the founder is a woman. Yeah. So um, co-founders, both women, both um, re like both based from like an hour from me um, oh, cool. where yeah. they grew up um, yeah. and my age, or I think one year younger. Um, and it's been amazing. Like they're, they're mm. so driven and like, they're always on Slack. Like they're so mo like invested into the us and into the team 
and always trying to like better and make sure we're okay and better that the, the team's okay because that will ultimately help the whole business as a whole. Um, so it's been incredible. I don't, obviously I know nothing else, but I have heard that's not always the case and that's not necessarily, that's not usual to work so closely with the founders. So I think it's been really nice for my first, you know, my first role to be the way it has. For sure. Like there's, there's so many companies and, and that's why when I talk about one of the most important skills as part of the skill tree, networking is one of them, personal branding, um, interviewing, but more importantly, screening, like what questions you ask the business owner to make sure that you can land positions just like that. How do you know that the person that you're going to be working with is of that stellar quality of those founders you work with? How do you know that they're amazing people? What questions do you ask? What do you look for? Most beginners really don't know what to look for when they're beginning out. And just as you're seeing the community, right? There are plenty of people with the first of their land. It's not the perfect fit. Yeah. It don't take time to get someone like myself to say, oh, cool. Like what, like, what do you think of this? People just kind of jump the gun and, and just go for the role because they get really excited. It's the <laughs> first role and they just jump on. And then, or they just don't end up preparing well enough and ask them right questions because having the right offer can set you back or put you forwards a week, couple of weeks, a month, couple of months, yeah. even up to a year, depending on where you're working. So I think you've uh, you've done a really good job and, and even just by luck, found some yeah. really great founders to work with who are supportive, great uh just provide you great training and just seem like a general good business overall because there are plenty of businesses in our space that aren't good, right? Yeah. Bad founders, bad sales managers, bad training, unethical business practice, um, you know, don't get the client's results, right? It's, there's plenty of ton of those out there. And so you really have to know what to look for with these companies because otherwise you can end up wasting your time, a lot of opportunity cost and not working and selling for a company that actually delivers what they say on they do. But it sounds like your company does that very well. Yeah, absolutely. And and I take no credit for that. Like, I think it was just pure luck. Like, I had mm -hmm. no idea what I was looking for. And I, if I would have been on, if they would have sold me that and I would have been on, you know, a call with someone who was unethical or, you know, a bad founder, I probably wouldn't have known the difference until I was in it for like a few weeks or a month. So mm. I just genuinely think that was just like right place, right time um, to find to find them really. And the thing is, I wouldn't completely attribute it to luck because everything you've done up until now <laughs> has built up to that result. And I find that very commonly. Um, you know, even before I done all the way up until now, but in previous experiences, every single time there's an uptick of exponential growth, it's from what you've done beforehand. Yeah, true. And I, th I think there's uh, something I saw on Instagram before, which is like something to do with time lag and it's from positive and, and negative elements. So it's like, if you skip the gym or if you eat terrible, you may not feel it now, but in a couple of months, you will. And yeah. then it'll come to a point where there's a drastic change that needs to be made or exponential negatives happen. Same thing with what you do with your business, because I find this a direct correlation between people who run their own business like you did and jump into sales. You have the right mindset, right? Yeah. Super like always wanting to get after it, really hungry, want, wants to be a high achiever just like yourself. Like you want it bad enough. Like you want it as bad as you want it to breathe quite yeah. So because you had a 5,000, 6,000, you know, bill for your car to get it fixed. <laughs> yeah. yeah, absolutely. And I, I do find it funny when I see people, um, say that they'll do like part like I know I said to you, you said, what offer do you want? And I said, part-time, like I want part-time hours. I want this easy life. And I don't know why, like, I think I just fell into like the dream of it, but I see some people now sometimes mention that they'll spend one to two hours get into high ticket clothes and you can spend one to two hours on a call and then you can go to the beach and you can go on a night out and you can do this and do that and to me well maybe they found the hack that I have not found but 
to me that's just yeah. not possible like why on earth would you start in an industry like this where you can literally have like uncapped income right and you can set yourself up for quite a long time and do like three hours a day of work like to me I'll do as many hours as I can physically do to ensure that like until like I need a day off like I obviously have one day off a week but even on that like this week I'm taking a call because that's the only time the client can do it so I'll do it Mm. um I don't not saying everyone has to be like that but in my mind I'm thinking I don't know how long these opportunities are around so I need to make the most out of them and like put in the most I can to get to get the experience and to reap the rewards of it really totally and we were talking about before with where you want to take things and how you want to progress over like the next year or so, which was funny because as you mentioned before, and we talked about earlier on, things have actualized so quickly. Yeah. That you're like, well, like what is even happening right now? Cause like <laughs> you're like 10 K a month and then you hit it and you're like, okay, so like what's the next step? Yeah. And then for you, cause it's, I want to like hear that perspective. Cause a lot of people, people have different goals, right? And I think it's always marketed to us as like make $10,000 a month and then travel the world and do this, that, yeah. and other thing. You have a bit of a different idea. So, I mean, let's talk about that. Like, what, like, what are your plans? You, you said you're more like homely. You want to stay at home. You don't want to travel yeah. too much. Like what's, what's the, what's the difference in lifestyle now? I think for me, um, as I said to you, like I said, oh yeah, 10 K is the dream, but it won't be like, I want to be consistent and I want to continue to grow that because why wouldn't I, I'm not going to stop at that. Um, Mm. I think I've just got to, I don't like to get too ahead of myself. So I think I need to now make that realization that I need to set myself that next goal financially. Um, but it'll be consistent working at that for the next few months and then start, you know, in hopefully increasing that income. Um, But for me, like, I just want to make sure that I'm set up, like, I want to make sure my family's okay, I want to make sure that, you know, that they're covered, and then make sure that my, you know, like I said, I'm, I am, I want to go on lovely trips away and lovely holidays. But for me, like, I definitely have a lifestyle in my head of the the house that I want to live in, and the car that I want to drive and the certain gym and the gym I want to go to and how I spend my days and, and like, how I what I do with my friends just I don't want like for example a holiday to be four times a year and like that's all I look forward to like I want my life every day to be like everything I've ever dreamed of so I want to set my life up every day to be quite like luxury I guess and and just have like a really nice peaceful life and then of course travel like I'm not like stuck in the UK but I think that will come like organically um, but yeah, I want to set my life up here and obviously like my family as well. No, I love that. And is there any places on the bucket list you want to go? Um, I've been to Europe a few times, but I want to do it like well. And I want to stay in like very nice places. I save a lot of destinations on um, Instagram. So mm. I've got like my list. Um, is there any places... Bali I know you've been to Bali I've never been that would be mm-hmm. nice um you put me on the spot now I can't think off the top of my head but I just okay. <laughs> like sunny like for me like sunny um yeah. like relaxing holidays um where yeah I can just like enjoy food and like just chill out but also be in like a lovely resort and and just have that time really and it'll be an interesting feeling for you as it was for me uh which is being able to travel and earn money while traveling yeah. would be a very interesting feeling for you. A lot of the guys tell me it's a very strange uh, feeling when you do it. It's uh, it feels strange because you're typically used to like going and traveling on a holiday and it's ending up you're negative in the bank account, but yeah. you can come away having more money than you originally came to the the country that you traveled to in the first place. hundred percent. I haven't um, experienced that yet, but um I agree. I think the mindset is like when you save for a holiday, then you're like you've saved all your like money and and you're going to go on a holiday and you'll come back and you're broke. Basically, I think that is the mindset, isn't it? People have like one holiday a year and that's like their whole life for like they're looking forward to it. Um, For me, it will be 
it would be strange to, like I said, to take calls because I also heard a perspective the other day of why you don't need to go on like a seven day holiday and just take time off work. Like you could go on a three week holiday and um, take calls. And I just hadn't thought about it because I haven't got any holidays booked at the minute. So I just didn't even think about it, but it's so true. And I haven't experienced that yet, but it will be, I'll need to make sure that my mindset is in that place where I don't need to book two weeks off from calls like it doesn't need to be that way I just need to like manage my time so a few hours on in the morning I'll take calls and then the rest I can enjoy the holiday so I yeah I look forward to that but I don't I think I'll have to just make sure I manage my time well to to enjoy both so I feel like I am relaxing but also can work at the same time it's an interesting balance I think just keeping good boundaries is pretty important yeah. there. Um, if you're just sitting in like four hours in the morning and then you just have all the activities from there should be good, but some yeah. people handle, some people handle it differently than others. Some people need to be very very well prepared, or this that another thing. Um, obviously, since you're so new, it's like well, you know, now it's like you kind of have to prepare a little bit for calls. But once once you've been in the game for a while, yeah, it's gonna become second nature to you, and you just be able to. For me nowadays, I can rock up to a sales call waking up two minutes before. <laughs> Like it, it really yeah. doesn't matter to me. So you'll eventually get to that point, but it just depends on who you really are, I guess. Yeah, definitely. But I look forward to it. Like I don't, I don't want to be confined to like my house every day to take calls. Like I want that freedom. That's, that's the whole point. So yeah. um, it's something that I'll work towards. I feel like at the minute it sounds crazy, but I need to like plan things like that to look forward to. Cause at the minute I'm just like, no, I'll just work. And yep. like I won't see friends, I'll just work. <laughs> and yeah. it's like, I'm just in that mode, but I need a balance, I think. So I'll figure that out as we go. But at the minute, I'm quite happy with the work. <laughs> it's, yeah, no, it's it's very normal to go through that phase. I went through the exact same phase and I still do. Uh, but it's a thing that you're not really used to because you're not taught your entire life that you can enjoy doing what you do. Yeah. Uh, and it's it's hard to kind of come to that conclusion where just like for me nowadays, like I love what I do and it doesn't really feel like work to me at all. It's not like I have to force myself to show up. No one's forced me either. Yeah. Same thing for you. Like how have you, how have you enjoyed doing what you've been doing? I know you're, you're relatively obsessed with it now and you're, you do enjoy <laughs> it, but yeah. Like what, what are, what are your thoughts on sales so far? I love it. I think it's not for everyone. And mm. I think don't believe what you see on social media where you can do a couple of hours a day. Like if you want that easy life, it's just, I don't believe that that's the case. And like there's so many different parts to it that you would only know once you've got the experience, like once you're in and you're, you're on your first offer. Um, and I think, yeah, I think like, I don't know. I think you can do all this preparation and of course like role play and things like that. And that's great, but nothing will prepare you for when you're actually in it. Um, yeah, I so I think, you've got to have that work ethic. Like if you're prepared to like graft and, 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 and build your skill, then it's for you. But if you want to make like 10 K per month or like even like three K per month, right. And you want to do like a one hour a day or something, or as and when you can just pick up your laptop, like it just doesn't work like that in my opinion. Mm -hmm. um, so I think it's not for the faint hearted, but I think like if you've got a work ethic and like, you're happy to like do that and work all hours when you need to. And you can have so many rewards from that. And obviously the income and the freedom is amazing. And like something that I don't believe that many industries offer without obviously having, like I had the freedom before, right? Cause I had that business. So I, that hasn't really changed for me. Um, but I think that's very rare to have that freedom unless you have your own business where you've got to invest thousands and thousands to get something going this you've just got to invest in yourself and like be willing to show up and do the work tell us about your reality now how hard are you working what are you doing because like you just said it's not as easy as most people think so like what like what does your reality look like today and now like what like what, what does the day-to-day -day look like I probably work um around I probably do around 40 hours a week of calls plus like team meetings, admin, things like that. So I probably work around 45, 50 hours a week currently. Mm -hmm. um, 
and my day to day, like I usually block off all the morning for myself because also people don't want calls. I'll work around what people want, but people don't usually want calls in the morning. So that's when I'll wake up, go to the gym, like do things that I want to do. And then I'll take calls um, until like, um, so last night I finished at 10.30 PM because the, like, well, I was on a call. Um, so, I mean, every day is different, but like like last week I was meant to, you know, go for dinner with mum. So I shut my calendar off early. So you can do that, right? So it's having that flexibility. Um, but yeah, I'd say on average, I'm working around um, like 45, 50 hours. Mm. And it would, and basically my day to day would be like making sure, like I've got, obviously got my calendar, got my calls, there's team meetings, making sure like, obviously you have like a pipeline of people. So can you reach back out? chat with them and like see who's interested so it's like just keeping on top of admin which I didn't know was a thing until I got this role there's a lot obviously every offer may be different this is just my experience but there's Mm -hmm. a lot you can do behind the scenes like let's say if your calendar if you haven't got many calls that day you can go out and find the the calls and I've done that and closed so that also something I didn't know and I think that's not one to two hours per day, right? So it's like, if you want it, you can find it. And if you want to find the clothes, you can find it, but you've got to be prepared to like find it basically. And it's all in the choice, right? Like you have the ability to choose the hours you want to work. You have the ability to choose how hard you want to push. You have the ability to choose how much money you want to make. And I was just speaking uh, to Ben about that when I gave him a phone call, when he got his first role almost every year ago now the idea that you can literally just spawn money out of thin air is a crazy feeling. You can literally, like you said, go find your own calls, go find the leads, book in your triages, book in your sales calls, and you can create more opportunity in your calendar so you can earn more. It's a, there's very few industries that you can actually do that. And like you mentioned, have the selection and the opportunity or the ability to have that optionality to where you just, you pick and choose how hard you work. But when yeah. you when you actually if if you if it is something that you're made for, which like yourself and myself, it's something that you're excited about and yeah. you're continuously like learning and growing, just getting better and better and better each time. Because sales is just an infinite game that even now nowadays I'm still improving my sales game and still getting better and, and always learning. It really never stops. So it's just a very exciting never-ending learning game basically yeah it's so exciting I think like there's so much potential and then also like I think you've got to be quite strong mentally which I go through like days of having those confidence and not because obviously when you've got a day where you've taken like a few calls and you've got no closes like I had one the other day and it's one day like no one's dying but for me I was like this is the worst thing that could happen. Like I've, I've lost it. Like, like I'm not going to get this back, like blah, blah, blah. And actually, you know, the next day, then you close a couple, then you're fine again. So it's also like up and down, like it's not money, money, money. Like there are days where, and I speak with some people and they've had weeks, obviously the offer, depending if the offer is really expensive, then you literally would maybe close a couple a month. I don't know how it works for them, but that would, you'd have to be quite strong I think to to be able to take that amount of rejection so it is about um taking that amount of rejection and and I found for me when you start thinking about yourself in these calls it's never going to work like you have to really think like there's no point trying to force someone to buy something if it doesn't work for them like if you go into it even if you've had a terrible day with their best interest at heart there's the outcome's always going to work in your favor like nine times out of ten so yeah, I think that like mental strength of it, it is very up and down. It's not money every day, but obviously on the days that it is making money, it's great. And that's sales. That's the, yeah. that's, that's the whole career. So no, it's it's great. I think a lot of people watching will share, uh, appreciate those insights. And so from spending your time in the community, um, obviously connecting you know with uh, some of the other women in the community as well, like Juji, Jasmine, mm-hmm and a couple others like what has your overall experience been like being a part of the rsa how have you found the members being in there like what have you found the trending like nah, tell me about your experience i think it's been really welcoming obviously coming in there was there's still not many women and but when i came in i think it was just Gigi. um yeah. 
So just herself. But I think she wasn't actually active as of that time. I think she was yeah. still. So it was kind of just was when weird. I turned up. Yeah. Just you with like 140 guys <laughs> yeah. or something like that. And I'm and like, I, like, I need more women in the program. And like, you're one of the first. I'm just letting you know. And you're like, that's all good. I'll welcome it. And I was <laughs> yeah. like, yeah. Yeah. And I think I did. Like, I took it in my stride. And I, like I said, like I had joined the group call and it was all men and I was like okay but I also didn't want like I'm not the type of some girls obviously like feminism and everything but I'm not the type of girl that you should all everyone should change how they're acting just because I'm in the room like I'm the only woman there that's fine like don't worry about me like I'll just sit in the corner and listen so for Mm -hmm. me like it didn't matter to me like it was fine and um the calls and everyone's been really nice and people have like messaged me like when I first joined to see how I'm getting on and like being really welcoming so I think like as a if from a girl's perspective like don't stress that there's not many women I've actually seen some women only um mentorships or businesses I don't like that like I don't for mm. me, I don't see why we all need to be women only or men only. Like, I think it's nice to have that balance because it's like different perspectives. Um, so, yeah, I think it's great. And I think um, like obviously joining, it was a completely new experience, but everyone's been lovely. And then, of course, like going through the like the content, your education, it's just been it's just straight to the point. Like, I don't want to watch an hour long video And in the 59th minute, get my answer. Like, I just want to watch something that's five minutes if needed. And I get what I need to get, which is exactly how you present things. And then I know other people have said this, but the fact that I can just message you, that's so important for me. Um, And I think that's the value, really, when you look at it like that is the value. And when I looked, like I said, another mentorship before, I didn't have a call or anything, but it was huge. And I always thought, like, I'm just going to be a number in this. and that's just not where I don't believe you can learn. And like, I, I, I remember messaging you about the offer before I um, joined and you just responded like within five minutes. And I think obviously I appreciate that as you grow, I don't know how that would work, but at the minute where things are at, I think it's perfect because to have someone there like yourself who have had all that experience, that I can just ask any question to that's really rare. And I don't think, I don't know if I would have, I don't think, well, I know I wouldn't have had this without joining a mentorship. There's just no way because it, it's just like, how do we even navigate the industry? It is quite daunting. Yeah, yeah, uh, I would agree. And I think, like you mentioned before, how things are growing and progressing. I keep on saying it and my mind hasn't changed. It's like, I only really want to scale this to five students a week. Yeah. I don't want this to be a behemoth training program. In fact... I would love, it is pretty ex- like exclusive now where like I do turn people away who I don't think can okay. fit and I, and I don't think it's fantastic for, to, for them to, to move forward. Uh, and that's why like you find like the caliber of people in the community is so high is because mm-hmm. I'm not having to go out and close people because I need the money for advertising mm-hmm. because I don't yeah. do any, right? It's just <laughs> off the YouTube channel. It's just through referral. And that's how we've grown so quickly uh, and so fast is just by focusing on you guys, like just helping you in, in any capacity that you need and slowly, but surely finding the little problems and obstacles and roadblocks that you have along your journey and slowly fixing them so that when we do consistently have 20 students coming in, we have about, you know, 12 to 14 now, we're going to have all the systems to sustain that. And yeah really keep a tight knit community where, because like you mentioned, having that one-on-one experience is you can't find it in many places because yeah. so many people want to scale it, but like the business, like hundreds of thousands of months and all these students and so on and so on. Whereas after experiencing spending a lot of money on training and mentorships, that was the biggest thing that I didn't like or originally bought it for, but then it disappeared which is yeah. you you need to have that one-on-one access to the source because if you're just talking to some random guy or some random girl who's not had the experience and it's going to be slow to respond to you and this that, and the other thing, like I want everyone to, to understand as well, how quickly is like our communication in the platform? Is it a couple of days? Are you waiting a couple of months to hear from me or is it pretty fast? 
it's like same day well I know yeah. we're in different time zones but same day and like I think there's been one time that it took you a few hours longer and you were like I'm so sorry like I'm <laughs> traveling or whatever so yeah like it, it is it's very quick and I think that's like it that it needs to be that way doesn't it because like I think this yeah. industry moves quite quickly so if if people have a problem or like they're trying to get an offer I think that's why it works so well and and everyone like within the RSA who are like putting in the work are seeing the results because you're there for the support they've got the education and they've got that community aspect so like they've got everything that they would need it's just yeah it's just on them really if they want to like utilize it and and get it no I appreciate it and for you, if there was if there was one final thing that you would uh, have as a takeaway for anyone that's watching that, I don't know, just been watching the YouTube channel for a while and, and is looking to take a risk, is looking to jump in a high ticket sales or even like a golden nugget or a key takeaway that you'd give somebody, like is there any like final notes or final uh, lessons you'd like to share with anyone that's watching? Um, I would this- say like I, <laughs> I wouldn't. I wouldn't not not to give any like motivational speech or anything like I wouldn't this isn't for everyone like if you Mm. have genuinely watched this for ages and you're super scared of trying and and you and you want your weekends or you like you want and like you like your constant salary then I don't think it's for you right so I think it's like if you've watched and you're if you're looking at different mentorships and different guidance or you think you can do it independently that would be the type of person where I'd say like then you should absolutely take that step forward and you should I mean I would always say like back the RSA like I think it's phenomenal to to be able to have that support so yeah if you're like toying up different people's options like different options on in the industry then absolutely go for it um because I think it's like yeah it will you'll absolutely get the results if you're willing to put in the work but I think yeah with this industry like don't be fooled with making all this money really quickly like and if that's your mindset, it isn't going to work. And you have to make that investment in yourself. Like I speak with people on a daily basis who are so scared to make yeah. that investment, but that is the easiest thing you're going to do. From that moment, handing over your money is the easiest part. And then it's like the rest comes after. So yeah, I wouldn't, I'd say like back yourself. If you believe you can do it, take the step because it's so worth it. Love it. Very, very- <laughs> Well, guys, hopefully you enjoyed that interview with Shelly. I know I, I learned a little bit as well. So hopefully you got some key takeaways and learnings from that. Uh, if you want to find Shelly, I'm going to pop her links down below. She's starting some personal branding. So I'll pop down her Instagram and where you can find her as well. Um, but otherwise, I will see you guys in the next interview. Bye for now.